So what can cause systemic inflammatory response syndromes? Well, one non-infectious cause is ischemic conditions, such as myocardial infarction or pulmonary embolism, secondary to deep venous thrombosis, occluding the blood supply to parts of the body, causing an inflammatory response as a result of the ischemic injury. And another possibility is a reperfusion injury. So if the blood supply to part of the body has been cut off for a period of time, and then the tourniquet is released or whatever it is, what you've done something to restore the blood supply, then you can get reperfusion injuries as well. So ischemic causes and reperfusional causes. Now again, trauma is an obvious cause. So if someone's got bashed up from a fall or a road traffic accident or an assault or whatever it is, then obviously they're going to have damaged tissue and that's going to release inflammatory mediators and cytokines into the blood and cause a SERS type response. Burns will also do this. So this means that after a significant trauma, not only has the individual got pain from the original traumatic damaged tissues, they also don't feel very well because they've got the systemic effect of the inflammatory mediators and the cytokines making them feel ill as well for a period of time. So ischemic reperfusional trauma burns causes. Chemicals are another cause. So for example there could be a perforated gallbladder resulting in a biliary peritonitis. Now this isn't caused by infection but the bile causes massive inflammation to the peritoneal sac. Again, certainly causing a systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Over time, of course, it will get bacterial secondary infection to complicate the issue. Well, another example of a chemical cause is pancreatitis. Now in pancreatitis, you get the activation of pro-digestive enzymes or pre-digestive enzymes which are prematurely activated in the pancreas and start digesting the pancreas and indeed start digesting any tissue that they come into contact with, again causing massive inflammation. So again the cause is initially chemical, although there again you can get secondary bacterial infection from that. Infection is an obvious cause and when there's a SERS caused by infection we call that sepsis. And any infection can cause a sepsis type reaction. It could be a viral infection. It could be a bacterial infection. Any type of infection can cause it. And the most severe re reactions, the most severe systemic inflammatory response type syndromes are caused by gram negative bacteria. Gram negative sepsis can be very, very serious and of course life threatening because gram-negative organisms have a different bacterial cell wall to gram-positive organisms. Gram-negative organisms have lipopolysaccharides and these lipopolysaccharides are released from the cell walls into the tissues and massively stimulate the systemic inflammatory response. But whatever the cause, there's going to be inflammatory mediators and there's going to be cytokines pro-inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin type 1. Now interleukin was originally discovered because it was interleukocytes. We now know that these cytokines, although they are produced by leukocytes, communicate with many different cell types as well as other leukocytes. But interleukin type 1 remains a pro-inflammatory mediator and tumor necrosis factor is a very potent inflammatory mediator. So it's good that we get this inflammatory response because it's protective. But it needs to be controlled as well. So if the inflammatory response gets out of hand, if there's an excessive inflammatory response, that can actually start to do more harm than good. Because the inflammatory response can damage the tissues and indeed again can be life-threatening if it gets out of control. But of course the body's already anticipated this and it produces cytokines which limit the immune response. So you get pro-inflammatory cytokines but you also get inflammatory limiting cytokines such as interleukins type 6, type 10 or 
type 12 that limit the response. So the response should be homeostatically regulated by these cytokines. And I think the last thing we'll say in this episode about systemic inflammatory response syndrome is that there can be a cellular response as well, or there will be a cellular response. And, and these are well known. If there's a bacterial infection, there's going to be an increased number of neutrophils, a neutrophilia. If there's a viral infection, normally you get an increased number of lymphocytes, a lymphocytosis. If there's allergic or parasitic infections, you normally get an increased number of eosinophils, an eosinophilia. So we've talked about systemic inflammatory response syndromes. We've talked about sepsis. Now, I think I will just mention the three classifications of sepsis, actually. So sepsis is where you have two of these six criteria for sepsis. But if that gets worse, then the sepsis can actually result in an organ failure or more than one organ failing. And if sepsis causes one or more organ failures, then that would be classified as severe sepsis. So severe sepsis can become severe sepsis. And of course, it's very important that we recognize this at a very early stage and give the patients appropriate intravenous antibiotics. Because if we don't, the, inf the mortality rate goes up by about 6% per hour. In other words, that's 1% increased mortality rate for every 10 minutes that you delay in giving the antibiotics, normally intravenous antibiotics. So sepsis is where you've got two of these six criteria. Severe sepsis is where you have one or more organs failing. And that can go on to develop into septic shock, where there is a hypoperfusion of the body tissues, ultimately causing a hypotension, obviously a life-threatening situation.